On today's Prophecy in the News, we're going to talk about a fascinating subject. That One of the subjects I think that, though it may not appear to be to the average person something that you'll want to stay with and listen to, I think if you will, you'll find that it is one of the most incredible studies we've done in a long time. We're going to talk about today the book of Leviticus, the fascinating Leviticus. We're going to take a look at it from a special perspective. It is one of the greatest books in the Bible. Gary Stream is here to discuss with me Leviticus. J.R., this is the book really that takes its name from the Levites, of or pertaining to the service of the Levites, which is why it gets its name Leviticus. And of course the Levites were the priestly tribe uh, in, after the priesthood of Aaron. They were the ones who officiated all of the rituals and sacrifices under law uh, in and around the tabernacle and the, the first and second temples. Mm -hmm. But isn't it interesting, Gary, that this book called Leviticus, uh, the title of it was given to it uh, when the Septuagint version mm -hmm. was translated. Mm -hmm. Its original Hebrew name is not Leviticus at all. Mm -hmm. Tell us about it, Gary. The original name of this book is really the first word of the book, Vaikra, which simply means, and he called. Of course, the he is the Lord. Mm -hmm. And we read verse 1 of chapter 1, And the Lord called unto Moses, and spake unto him out of the tabernacle of the congregation, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. So the first word in Hebrew is Vaikra, and he called. And it was the title of the book before it was changed to Leviticus. Now, when they, when they produced a Greek translation of the mm -hmm. original Hebrew, I'm sure, Gary, they, the, the rabbis thought, what word could we use that would most clearly identify the concept that we have in Vaikra? Mm. And I think they picked Leviticus because the Levites were the priestly caste. They were the ones who approached the throne of God. They had their service in the tabernacle and the temple. And this idea of being called is uh, one that has to do with serving God. Mm -hmm. And to me, this makes Leviticus the, one of the greatest books of the Bible. Um, it's, it's something that is, it's a calling. Has God ever called you in a very special way? Well, that's what this book means. By the way, God called me into the gospel ministry. And so I received a calling, as we would say it. That's what the book represents. It is a special spiritual call of God. And this word varikra, uh, vayikra here mm -hmm. has, at, uh, in the very opening word of the book, a little small olive right at the end. Not, not a regular size olive, but a little small olive, the letter. And that takes us to the heart of our message today, the alphabetic design of Leviticus. There are 27 chapters in the book of Leviticus. There are 27 letters to the Hebrew alphabet. 22 normal letters and five sophit letters or final forms. And Gary, this is what makes the book so absolutely incredible in its divine design. That's right. Before we get into the 27 letters, however, J.R., I think it's good to note that uh, we have the five books of Moses. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. We're talking about the middle one of those. Mm -hmm. uh, we have here f five books, which we have discussed as a five-lamp menorah in the past. Yes. The center lamp would be Leviticus. This is the Lord's book, literally. And as we, uh, you may have heard us in the past discussing that which is called the menorah in the Torah, uh, in which you can f actually find the, the name of the Torah encoded in Genesis, Exodus, uh, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. But in that middle book, J.R., you find the actual word of the Lord encoded at eight-letter intervals in the very first sentence of Vaikra or Leviticus. Yes. Actually, you know, from the structural design of this book, we can, uh, we, we can determine a, a uh, divine... Uh, presence, mm -hmm. a, a special spiritual 
meaning mm -hmm. to it that may not appear on the surface in just what chapter 1 says or chapter 2 says or chapter 3 says. Uh, certainly from those chapters and what they have to say, we can see God's plan and purpose. But in the overall design, let us not miss this spectacular Yahweh mm. in the opening verse. Mm -hmm. And that little small olive at the end of the first word. Mm -hmm. Now the beginning of the second word begins with a regular size olive. So you can see the difference in the, in, in the original... Uh, uh, Hebrew of mm -hmm. the scripture. We can't see it in the English, of course, but in the Hebrew, we can see that little small olive that c concludes this uh, first word in the book. And of course, the, the, the main thrust of the book is holiness. The word holiness is found 87 times in this book. And the word atonement found 45 times in this book. And so this, this is a book of transcendence. It's, my, I would have to say it's a book of sanctification, mm -hmm. Gary. Yeah. It really, it speaks of the holiness of God in a very special way. Again, the first sentence of this book is, uh, says this, in roughly this order in the Hebrew, and called to Moses and spoke Jehovah to him out of the tent of meeting, saying, and J.R., there's something very, very um, uh, spiritual, very, uh, div there's a sense of the divine presence in that first utterance. It has the name of the Lord in it, coded in at eight letter intervals, yes. and it, it concludes, that is the first word concludes with that small olive, which was written by the hand of Moses himself. Yes. And that small olive speaks volumes. Yes. Now, you, you please understand that when we get to the end of Exodus, we have the raising up of the tabernacle mm -hmm. and the glory of God coming down into the tabernacle. And that introduces Leviticus. Mm. So, J. Vernon McGee put it this way. He says, in Genesis, we see man ruined. In Exodus, we see man redeemed. In Leviticus, we see man worshiping God. He says... Exodus offers pardon. Leviticus offers purity. In Exodus, we have God's approach to man. In Leviticus, it is man's approach to God. In Exodus, Christ is a savior. In Leviticus, he is the sanctifier. In Exodus, man's guilt is prominent. In Leviticus, man's defilement is prominent. In Exodus, God speaks out of the mount. In Leviticus, he speaks out of the tabernacle. In Exodus, man is made nigh to God. In Leviticus, he is kept nigh to God. And that's what makes Leviticus so important, Gary. Mm -hmm. We see the grandeur and the glory of the Shekinah, the Shekinah, presence of God in Exodus. And now man approaches. In Exodus we have the tabernacle and uh, it prepares men for service. In Leviticus we have the utensils for that service. Mm. And you know, in, uh, in a Hebrew commentary, on the Vayikra, uh, we have the sanctuary as being the, uh, uh, the, the primary uh, place for man's worship. And they say here that this sanctuary was designed around the Ark of the Covenant. So the Ark of the Covenant was first, that, that's the throne mm -hmm. of God, and then the building. And once the building, then the utensils. And that, that comes to Leviticus and, and the holiness of man, the worship of God. I think that's so important for us mm. to understand that. Yeah, now, a moment ago, J.R. spoke of the fact that this book has 27 chapters. Mm -hmm. The Hebrew alph alphabet has 22 letters plus five final letters, yielding a total of 27 letters. And those letters, as we have mentioned many times, have meanings. Now, the first letter would be Aleph. Mm -hmm. And we've already spoken of the fact that there's a key Aleph in the very first sentence of the first chapter. Aleph, if you'll recall, uh, refers to the one and only indivisible divine creator, God. Yeah. 
And we have him here, Jr. There's something else in chapter one that's really intriguing, mm -hmm. because this chapter talks about the burnt sacrifice. And uh, I want to just read the second and third verses where God is speaking to Moses, and he said, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, If any man uh, bring an offering unto the Lord, you shall bring your offering of the cattle, even of the herd and of the flock. If his offering be a burnt sacrifice, of the herd, let him offer a male without blemish. He shall offer it of his own voluntary will at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation before uh, the Lord. Now here we have what J. Vernon McGee is referencing, man coming to God. We also have the Aleph here, because uh, when Moses wrote, the conformation of the letters was slightly different in his day. And the Aleph in Moses' day actually was made to represent the head and horns of a bull which yes. I think is, is fantastic. It reveals a fantastic yeah. truth about this book. Right. The very design of Aleph, the first letter, in those days, 1500 years B.C., in fact, in uh, Zondervan's pictorial encyclopedia of the Bible under the title Alphabet, it shows this ancient design, and I've just sort of drawn it right here. Mm -hmm. It's a set of horns and the head of the animal. And this... Uh, this thing says that this is the Sinai alphabet. Yeah, the alphabet of that. Sinai, the revealing of the Torah written in the hand of Moses. So when he wrote that small olive, it would have been shaped like the, the bullocks, mm -hmm. head and horns. And it was the sacrifice that brought man to God. Hmm. Listen to verse 4, And he shall put his hand upon the head of the burnt offering, and it shall be accepted for him to make an atonement for him. Wow. You see, the only way you can be saved is by the blood sacrifice and atonement. And of course, that atonement or covering is fulfilled. This is a prophecy here in Leviticus. It is fulfilled in Jesus Christ. That's the most outstanding thing about Leviticus. The very fact that Jesus is the one here. Uh, let's see if I can find what I'm referring to here. We've got, for example, Tyndale uh, once wrote in his prologue to the book of Leviticus, he said, quote, Though sacrifices and ceremonies can be no ground or foundation to build upon, that is, though we can prove not with them, yet when we have once found Christ and his mysteries, then we may borrow figures, that is to say, allegories, similitudes, and examples, to open Christ and the secrets of God hid in Christ, even unto the quick, and can declare them more lively and sensibly with them than with all the words in the world. So he is saying these, these symbols, these sacrifices, this animal right here, that the sinner puts his head on the animal and, and confesses his sins, and the animal takes the sin away. Mm. It is a covering, an atonement, and Jesus Christ is the fulfillment of that. The second letter of the Hebrew alphabet is Bet. And we come to chapter 2 of Leviticus, and we get into the meat offering here. And you know, J.R., this, uh, this letter, Bet, which represents the number, the numeral 2 in Hebrew, is said to be the symbol of blessing and of creation. And it is the initial letter of the Hebrew word Baruch, which means to bless. Mm -hmm. And you know, we are talking in chapter 2 about the sons of Aaron bringing in the fine flour and the meal offering and uh, the meat offering, and in verse 3 of chapter 2 it says, And the remnant of the meat offering shall be Aaron's and his sons. It is the thing most holy of the offerings of the Lord made by fire. The remnant then goes to Aaron and his sons. And to me, this is, uh, pre presents a picture of mutual blessing. Aaron brings the blessing to God. Mm -hmm. God then in turn brings the blessing back to the house of Aaron. And it's just beautiful. Mm -hmm. Now you've got to understand what we're saying here. We're saying that the meaning of the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet is the theme of chapter 1. We are saying that the meaning of the second letter of the Hebrew alphabet is the theme of chapter 2, and so on. Gimel mm -hmm. for chapter 3, mm -hmm. Dalit yeah. for chapter 4. Let's, let's go to the Dalit, shall we? Yeah. Uh, and, you want to talk about past that. Gimel? Because Gimel well, here is very Take interesting. Gimel. Gimel would be the third chapter, and quickly mm -hmm. it would be good to look at it because the third chapter is the chapter that outlines the peace offering. This is the letter 
Gimel, the number three in Hebrew, and that is the symbol of kindness and culmination, God's loving kindness toward his people. And you know, this is the chapter of the peace offering, J.R. Mm -hmm. Peace it is the shows picture. Shows the loving kindness. Oh, it does. It, verse three, for example, says, he shall offer the sacrifice of the peace offering, an offering made by fire unto, uh, unto the Lord. And then in verse nine, he shall offer the sacrifice of the peace offering, an offering made by fire unto the Lord, and describes the entire offering and how to offer it, how to approach God, but it's done to obtain peace. This is God's yeah. loving kindness. Wow. Chapter 4 now, Dalit. Chapter 4 is the letter Dalit. In Hebrew, this is cognate to the word Delet, which means door. And therefore, Dalit stands for the numeral 4 in Hebrew, that is chapter 4, and also it stands for the door, metaphorically, mm -hmm. uh, which is, it, spiritually speaking, the door of entrance into the kingdom of God or into the kingdom of his righteousness. And in this case, the tabernacle, which mm -hmm. is a prophetic symbol of the future oh, kingdom, yeah. the presence of God. It really, it's beautiful. And we come to chapter four, and of course, this is the offering of the sin offering. And once again, we're talking about the bullock that is offered. Uh, chapter four, verse four. Interesting, because the Dalit is the number four. And he shall bring the bullock into the door, unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation before the Lord, and shall lay his hand upon the bullock's head and kill the bullock before the Lord. Wow. The door of entry. Yeah. Mm. So the door of the tabernacle in chapter four, we see the Dalit representing the fourth chapter. And it continues like that. Gary, I know we can't go through all of mm -hmm. them. Uh, shall we move on to the Lamed? Yeah, well, let's chapter go to... Uh, Which one? That's chapter 12. Okay. And we've done this in the past, Jr. We've, yeah. But since we don't have time to cover all the letters, uh, we sort of hit the high spots and, uh, and hope that uh, maybe you can read some of our more complete uh, listings and materials in your leisure time later on. You get a chance to do your own studies. Chapter 12, Jr in Leviticus, a very interesting chapter. It is the law concerning childbirth. Mm -hmm. It's a kind of a short chapter of eight verses, and it speaks of birth. And it speaks of the birth of the child. It speaks of the uh, law of circumcision. And it speaks of the, woman, uh, the woman's legal obligation to God if she bears a male child or if she bears a female child. Those obligations would be different. So we have the woman with child here. Woman with child is the main picture in, in this. We have the same picture in the 12th chapter of the book of Revelation. Um, of course, it, Revelation is alphabetically designed mm -hmm. as Leviticus is alphabetically designed. So when we come to the 12th chapter of Leviticus, we have the woman with child. When we come to the 12th chapter of Revelation, we have the woman with child as well. And uh, it is the Lamed chapter, the chapter of teaching and learning. Mm -hmm. uh, the next one, I guess what? Uh, shall we just move on over to Resh right quick? That chapter would be a, a good one. Chapter 20, uh, <clears throat> the, uh, the Resh. And you might read from that uh, chapter. selected verses. Okay. <clears throat> now the Resh means the wicked, refers to the wicked. And so he says here in chapter 20, uh, Whosoever he be of the children of Israel, and strangers sojourning in the land, that giveth any of his seed unto Molech, he shall surely be put to death, and the people of the land shall stone him with stones. I will set my face against that man, will cut him off from among his people, because he hath given of his seed unto Molech, to mm -hmm. defile my sanctuary, and to profane my holy name. So here is a chapter that deals with the wicked, mm -hmm. chapter 20, and it, uh, the theme here, uh, corresponds with the meaning of the 20th letter of the Hebrew alphabet. And on and on we can go there. 27 chapters mm -hmm. and 22 letters plus five sophit letters. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about these five sophit letters, these final forms. What makes a sophit letter? What makes a sophit letter, it appears at the end of a word and it is uh, one of the five Hebrew letters that would ordinarily appear in the center of a word, but as a final to J.R., it becomes a metaphor of God's finality, the things that he does prophetically in the future. So in the 23rd, 24th, 25th, 26th, and 27th chapters of Leviticus, these are represented by those final letters, mm -hmm. representing a, almost a future view of God's work. And in chapter 23, which is... Uh, 
uh, would be the final cough. Mm -hmm. Cough being the letter of crowning accomplishment. Guess what? We have the feasts of Israel. All yes. seven of them. All seven of them. Wow. Now that's final. <laughs> Passover, Feast of Unleavened Bread, yeah. Feast of First Fruits, Pentecost, tr Trumpets, uh, Feast of Aton Day of Atonement, and finally the Feast of Tabernacles. Those seven Jewish holy days are all given in chapter 23, and that certainly is a crowning accomplishment. That moves mm. us, by the way, into the prophetic nature of the book. Mm -hmm moving toward the far future because here in this 23rd chapter of Leviticus is the key to the understanding of oh, times. Yeah. It all deals around uh, Israel because you see Jesus is the fulfillment of the Passover. He died on Passover. He was a Passover lamb. He's coming back to fulfill the high holy days mm. of trumpets and Yom Kippur and uh, tabernacles. The next chapter, chapter 24, is represented by the final mem, which is said to be the letter of things concealed. Here we have the symbols, the oil for the lamps, the showbre showbread, and the law of God's sanctified name. And by the way, that, those are all concealed. The, the fine points of those symbols are concealed. The name of God has not been fully revealed to us, even to this present day. In the kingdom of heaven, we'll finally know that name that no man knows. <laughs> yeah. Now, we don't have time to really cover the subject adequately, but I've got to get back to that little olive. Mm. Because this is the book of the author and finisher of our faith. Yeah. Let me back up and say, this is the book of the author, not the finisher. Mm -hmm. Because the 27 chapters of Leviticus reveal to us the Aleph, the Alpha. The Omega is found in the 27 books of the New Testament. That's what's so incredible, Gary. Mm -hmm. It is. <laughs> so we have yeah. the Aleph introducing Jesus Christ and Hebrews, uh, and by the way, Hebrews is, is an interesting book to, you know, sort of reveal this, this, this whole thing to us. Jesus is called the book of Hebrews, the author and finisher of our faith. Mm. And the book of Hebrews deals with the tabernacle and the worship of the sacrifices, just as Leviticus does. In Leviticus, he is the olive, represented by that small olive, to call to attention to it. Over in the New Testament, 27 books, he is the finisher, and he calls himself the Alpha and the Omega. Yeah. So Leviticus is just the beginning of this wonderful, exciting journey uh, of sanctification to learn to be a holy person and to serve God.